In chapter 27, we will examine the reproductive system. Ovulation is shown here. Ovulation follows a surge of luteinizing hormone and an oocyte, an immature egg cell, is released into the uterine tube where it will then be available to be fertilized by a male sperm. Ovulation marks the end of the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle and the start of the luteal phase. We will examine those phases later on in this chapter. Let's first look at the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system manufactures gametes, sperm, and delivers them to the female reproductive tract where fertilization can occur. It consists of gonads, which produce the gametes and hormones, accessory glands and organs that secrete fluids into ducts and perineal structures that form the external genitalia. The scrotum and testes are shown here. The scrotum is a pouch of skin containing the testes or gonad of the male. Divided into two scrotal cavities by a scrotal septum marked externally by a raised ridge called the raph, a raphe. This allows the testicles to descend outside the body cavity where they can remain cooler and proper sperm production can occur. Proper sperm production occurs at three degrees lower than body temperature. Two muscles are associated with the scrotum's ability to change size and shape during temperature changes. The dartos muscle, which is a smooth muscle layer that wrinkles the scrotal sac, trapping warm air, and the cremaster muscle, which is a skeletal muscle layer that pulls the testicles close to the body, thus regulating body temperature. The testes are shown here. The testes are... Here is the process of spermatogenesis in the male. Spermatogenesis is sperm formation and begins during puberty and continues throughout life. It occurs in the seminiferous tubules of the testes and generally takes nine weeks. It requires three steps, mitosis of the spermatogonia, followed by one of the daughter cells undergoing meiosis to form the gametes, and differentiation of immature male gametes into physically mature sperm called spermiogenesis. The mitosis of spermatogonia is where each division of a diploid spermatogonium produces two daughter cells. One is a spermatogonium that remains in contact with the basal lamina of the tubule, and the other is a primary spermatocyte that is pushed towards the lumen of the tubule. As meiosis I begins, each primary spermatocyte contains 46 individual chromosomes. At the end of meiosis I, the daughter cells are called secondary spermatocytes. Every secondary spermatocyte contains 23 chromosomes, each of which consists of a pair of duplicate chromatids. The secondary spermatocytes soon enter meiosis II, which yields four haploid spermatids, each containing 23 chromosomes. For each primary spermatocyte that enters meiosis, four spermatids are produced. Spermiogenesis is where the spermatids undergo physical maturation to form the spermatozoa, or sperm, a process that takes approximately 24 days. The head and acrosome form on one end. The head contains the 23 chromosomes and the acrosome contains enzymes essential to fertilization of the egg. The neck contains both centrioles of the original spermatid. The microtubules of the distal centriole are continuous with those of the midpiece and tail. The midpiece contains the mitochondria arranged in a spiral 
around the microtubules. Mitochondrial activity provides the ATP required to move the tail. And the tail is the flagellum or whip-like organelle used to move the sperm. Here in the next slide, you can compare meiosis and mitosis of spermatogenesis. And here is also a comparison of mitosis versus meiosis. This slide shows the structure of the sperm that we just discussed, the head, midpiece, and tail. And here is the organs of the male reproductive system that we have discussed. One structure that we haven't looked at yet is the ductus deferens and some of the accessory glands. The ductus deferens is also called the vas deferens and transports sperm out of the epididymis towards the urethra. As part of the spermatic cord, the vas deferens, the blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels extend through the inguinal canal into the pelvic cavity, then up and over and behind the bladder. Contraction of the smooth muscle propels sperm from the epididymis through the vas deferens towards the urethra. The ampulla is the terminal end of the vas deferens and is somewhat enlarged. Just before the sperm is deposited into the urethra, the vas deferens joins the duct from the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct penetrates through the prostate gland where it drains sperm and secretions from the seminal vesicles into the urethra. And if a man has a vasectomy, which is done for sterilization purposes, this procedure cuts ties, and cauterizes the vas deferens. Now some of the accessory structures of the male reproductive system are the seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and bulbarethral glands, also known as Cowper's glands. The seminal vesicles are paired glands located posterior to the bladder, and they produce a viscous alkaline secretion containing fructose, prostaglandins, and clotting factors. This contributes about 60% of the volume of semen. The prostate gland is a single, small gland located at the base of the bladder. In addition to several other compounds, the prostate secretions contain seminal plasmin, an antibiotic protein that may help prevent urinary tract infections in males. And the bulbarethral glands are paired glands located at the bulb of the penis, also called Cowper's glands, and produce a thick alkaline fluid that lubricates the tip of the penis and neutralizes the urinary acids. The other thing to note in this figure is the urethra, and the urethra transports both urine and semen to the exterior, although at different times. It extends from the bladder to the tip of the penis and is divided into three regions. The prosthetic urethra, which is the portion of the urethra surrounded by the prostate gland. The membranous urethra, the portion that passes through the urogenital diaphragm and the spongy or penile urethra, a portion that runs through the penis and opens to the outside of the body through the external urethral orifice. Here you can see the penile cross-section. The penis is the male copulatory organ and along with the scrotum constitutes the male's external genitalia. The penis consists of the root, body, and the glans penis or head. The glans penis is attached to the shaft at the narrow neck.
covering the glans penis is the prepus or foreskin, which is often removed by a minor surgical procedure called circumcision. The penis consists of erectile tissue that contains many vascular spaces that fill with blood during sexual arousal, causing the tissue to become engorged and rigid. The crua consists of three masses of erectile tissue. The corpus spongiosum is the mid-ventral erectile body that surrounds the urethra and forms the gland penis. The corpus cavernosum is paired masses of dorsal erectile tissue that makes up most of the penis and extends to the neck. Let's examine the physiology of the male system by looking at the arousal, emission, and ejaculation phases. Arousal is, when the, is where you have enlargement and stiffening of the penis, which results from engorgement of the erectile bodies with blood. The arterioles supplying blood to the penis are usually constricted, resulting in a flaccid penis. Stimulation triggers a parasympathetic reflex that promotes the release of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide relaxes the smooth muscles, allowing the blood vessels of the penis to dilate. Expansion of the corpus cavernosum compresses on drainage veins, which prevent blood from draining away. Hence, an erection is achieved. Parasympathetic impulses also cause the bulbarethral glands to release their secretions before ejaculation occurs to lubricate the urethra and tip of the penis. Impotence in a male is when he is unable to achieve or maintain an erection. Emission is when you have propulsion of semen from the male duct system as a result of a spinal reflex. Further stimulation leads to the sympathetic activation that causes emission. Peristaltic contractions of the vas deferens propel sperm towards the urethra within the prostate gland. The seminal glands and prostate gland begin contracting and their secretions mix with the sperm to form semen. The bladder sphincter muscle constricts, preventing the expulsion of urine. The next phase is ejaculation. And this is a powerful series of rhythmic contractions that cause the semen to be ejected from the body. The muscles of the penis undergo rapid rhythmic contractions, propelling semen at a high rate of speed. The entire ejaculatory event is referred to as a climax or orgasm. If a man's semen is to be analyzed, it would show an alkalinity a certain milliliter of normal discharge per ejaculation, a sperm count of 50 to 130 million per mil of ejaculate, there would be expected to be a certain amount of morphology of sperm to be abnormal, but it would be less than 35%. Motility would be around 60%. Survival is generally 48 hours after ejaculation, and if a man is considered to be sterile, then he has less than 20 million sperm per milliliter of ejaculate. Testosterone synthesis and the regulation of testosterone production are shown here. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland regulate the production of testosterone and the cells that aid in spermatogenesis. GnRH activates the anterior pituitary to produce LH and FSH, which in turn stimulate the Leydig cells and Sertoli cells, respectively. This is a negative feedback system because the end products of the pathway, testosterone and inhibin, interact with the activity of GnRH to inhibit their own production. Look at the female reproductive system. The female reproduction, re reproductive system 
functions to produce gametes, an egg or ova, as well as nurture and protect the developing embryo. It also consists of gonads, ducts, and mammary glands. Let's look at the ovaries, tubes, and uterus first. Consists of the vulva, and this includes the mons pubis, the rounded ridge over the pubic bone, where pubic hair develops, the labia majora, hair covering skin folds, the labia minora, inner somewhat smaller hairless skin folds, the clitoris, a small protruding structure that is homologous to the penis in males and possesses erectile tissue, a fold of skin encircling the clitoris, the prepus, vestibular glands homologous to the bulbourethral glands of the male, and the perineum, a soft tissue between the vaginal region and the anus that is often cut during childbirth in a procedure called an, an episiotomy. The mammary glands are modified sweat glands present in both sexes but functional only in females in response to prolactin. The production of milk is called lactation. Secretory alveoli secrete the milk and cluster together to form lobules. Each lobe is drained by a lactiferous duct dilated to form a lactiferous sinus. On each side, the mammary gland lies in the subcutaneous tissue of the pectoral fat pad deep to the skin of the chest. Areolar is the pigmented portion of the breast with a protruding nipple. Now let's look at the physiology of the female reproductive system, oogenesis. Oogenesis is the production of eggs or ova, which occurs before birth, is completed only if the egg becomes fertilized by sperm. Meiosis begins before a woman's birth, accelerates at puberty, and ends at menopause. Mitosis of oogonia is unlike spermatogenesis in males because oogonia complete their mitotic divisions before birth. Meiosis I occurs between the third and seven months of fetal development where the daughter cells are primary oocytes prepared to undergo meiosis. They proceed as far as prophase I, but then the process is halted. The primary oocytes remain in a state of suspension until the individual reaches puberty, when rising levels of FSH trigger the start of the ovarian cycle. Each month thereafter, some of the primary oocytes are stimulated to undergo further development. Meiosis I is then completed, yielding a secondary oocyte and a polar body. Once a month, a secondary oocyte is ovulated into the fallopian tube. The secondary oocyte is suspended in metaphase II and will not finish meiosis unless fertilization occurs. Meiosis II is completed if and only if fertilization occurs. The polar bodies degenerate and die. This slide shows the correlation of Down syndrome with maternal age. The risk of Down syndrome or having a fetus with trisomy 21 increases dramatically as the maternal age increases as depicted in the figure. Now let's look at the ovarian cycle. And the ovarian cycle is divided into phases separated by ovulation. The follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. The follicular phase is where the follicle grows and encompasses day one through approximately day 13. The primordial follicles 
contain the primary oocytes are activated forming primary follicles. And they are simple cuboidal cells called granulosa cells surrounded by thecal cells. The granulosa and thecal cells begin to secrete estrogen. The granulosa cells also secrete a glycoprotein that forms a transparent membrane around the oocyte called the zona pellucida. The follicle now thickens, forming a secondary follicle, and a fluid-filled cavity called the antrum begins to form. As the antrum continues to expand, the granulosa cells become isolated on a stalk forming the corona radiata around the oocyte. This now distinguishes the structure as a graphene or vesicular follicle. Ovulation occurs generally around day 14 and is um, consistent with follicle growth and subsequent ovulation. The antrum swells causing the ballooning ovary wall to rupture and expel the secondary oocyte and its corona radiata. In about 1-2% to 2 of all ovulations, more than one oocyte is ovulated. Ovulation marks the end of the follicular phase and the beginning of the luteal phase. The luteal phase encompasses about day 15 to day 28 and is the formation of the corpus luteum from the granulosa and thecal cells. After ovulation, the ruptured follicle collapses and the antrum fills with clotted blood, forming the corpus luteum, which now begins to secrete progesterone and estrogen. If fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum continues to degenerate to form the corpus albicans or scar tissue. The uterine cycle is shown here and consists of the menstrual phase, the pre-ovulatory phase, and the post-ovulatory phase. The menstrual phase or menses is approximately days one through five and is where the uterine cycle begins with the onset, an interval marked by the degeneration of the functional zone of the endometrium. This degeneration is caused by constriction of the spiral arteries, which reduces endometrial blood flow. Eventually, the weakened arterial walls rupture and blood pours into the connective tissues of the functional zone. Blood cells and degenerating tissues then break away and enter the uterine cavity, and they're lost by passage through the external cervical os and into the vagina. The process of endometrial sloughing is called menstruation. The pre-ovulatory phase is also called the proliferative phase and is approximately day 6 through day 14. The bacillar zone and the deepest uterine glands survive menses. The epithelial cells of the uterine glands then multiply and spread across the endometrial surface. <laughs> Spiral arteries begin to develop and penetrate through the new functional zone of the endometrium. Restoration of the functional zone of the endometrium is stimulated and sustained by estrogens secreted by the ovarian follicles. Ovulation occurs on day 14 due to an LH surge. The post-ovulatory phase, which is also called the secretory phase, is approximately day 15 through 28. The uterine glands begin to secrete nutritious, glycogen-rich mucus into the uterine cavity to sustain the blastocyst until implantation has occurred. Secretion and preparatory changes in the endometrium occurs in response to rising progesterone from the corpus luteum in expectation of a potential embryo. Meanwhile, mucus secreted by the cervix becomes viscous, creating a cervical plug. 
The secretory phase begins at ovulation and persists as long as the corpus luteum remains intact. When the corpus luteum stops producing stimulatory hormones, a new uterine cycle begins with the onset of the next menses. And you can also see the hormones involved. GnRH, which stimulates the production and secretion of FSH. FSH, which stimulates the maturation of the ovarian follicles and the production of estrogen. LH, which stimulates ovulation of the oocyte and secretion of progesterone. Progesterone, which stimulates thickening and vascularization of the endometrium and secretion of nutrient-rich fluids from the uterine glands. And estrogen, which establishes and maintains the female's secondary sex characteristics and initiates the repair and regeneration of the endometrium. Menopause is the cessation of menstruation and occurs at generally ages 45 to 55 years. The ovaries fail to respond to FSH and estrogen levels as they decline. The number of remaining follicles decrease, regression of organs often occurs, hot flashes and mood swings are common due to hormonal imbalances. There are many contraceptive devices that can be used to prevent fertilization and contra um, um, contraception. Various contraceptive devices are shown here. For example, a male condom, female condom, diaphragm, um, natural family planning, Depo-Provera, IUDs, oral contraceptive devices, the birth control pill. Each of these contraceptive devices have success or failure rates noted here. The only contraceptive device that is 100%, of course, is abstinence or a complete a hysterectomy even a vasectomy in a male, shown here, has a certain failure rate. Now there are a number of STDs that can be caused by a wide variety of organisms. The latest estimates on STDs can be found at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website, which gives the rankings of STDs by state. So you could look at the rankings in Georgia the current estimates, <clears throat> as well as the rates per 100,000 and number of cases. Let's look at, in the final section, male and female reproductive development. Male and re female embryologic development, <clears throat> all fertilized eggs will become female with the addition of the gene from the SRY. Certain tissue has bipotential. Other reproductive structures are developed from embryological ducts like the uterus, uterine tubes, parts of the vagina, epididymis, ductus deferens, and seminal vesicles. And there is a video here where you can look at further development of the male or female reproductive tracts. Hormones of puberty were discussed previously, and during puberty, you see an increase in the release of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary, and this stimulates the gonads to produce sex hormones in both men and women, although their outcomes are different for each sex. And finally, some homeostatic imbalances are noted here. Testicular cancer, which is common in young men aged 15 to 35. Survival rates for this cancer are fairly good, around 95%. <clears throat> prostate cancer, cancer of the prostate. Um, 
Other forms of cancer are also noted, ovarian, cervical, breast cancer. Cervical cancer is most, the most common reproductive cancer in women aged 15 to 34, especially in cases where there's a history of sexually transmitted diseases. And about 70% of cervical cancers are le linked to HPV, the human papillomavirus. Various sexually transmitted diseases are also known here, noted here, as well as um, amnuria, which is a cessation of menses, uh, painful menstruation, or even endometriosis, which is overproduction of an endometrium lining. And here you can see the development of cervical cancer and how it is linked to HPV. And this concludes our overview of the reproductive system.